Hi, this is Kate McKinnon with Contemporary Geometric Beadwork, and I just want to quickly show you what the difference is between a kaleidocycle, which is made of 24 flat peyote triangles, and looks like this. One, two, three, four faces, each face distinct. And so to make one of these forms, 24 flat peyote triangles, uh, six each, of four different designs. One, two, three, four. <gasps> but what's that? This can turn outward as well as inward. So if you make your triangles with some distinction in the corners, perhaps one unusual corner or a design that's directional, then you can turn one face into two different designs. So a kaleidocycle made entirely of triangles and suitable for a beginner. We've got lots of triangle designs. Uh, we'll have them on the website, on Facebook. Uh, we've got hundreds for you. So triangles, kaleidocycle. Now, the easiest way to assemble a kaleidocycle turns out to be a mixture of tactics. And we're going to show you this assembly, which is a butterfly net. We're going to show you how to make this kind of a net join, which is traditionally done without hinges, just a bunch of round beads holding the triangles together. And we're going to show you how to assemble these into mirror tetrahedra, pretty neat, right? <laughs> Easily and cleanly while building in hinges here, here, and here so that we can make natural joins in a turning machine. These kaleidocycles, as you can see, are three sets of mirror tetrahedra. So we're going to show you this kind of a join made from individual triangles arranged in a way that gives you natural hinges. For those of you who are advanced beaters and would like to try something a little bit different, we're going to show you how to assemble a very different kind of form. And yet, is it really so different? So this is the kind of thing that we assemble using warped hexagons and triangles too. So warped hexagons, right. This is an advanced concept only because the warped hexes are so difficult to hold in your hand. Once you get them started though, they're anybody's game. So let's have a look at these pieces. This is a cycle that may, when you first pick it up, appear to be a simple kaleidocycle. If you land on one of its triangular faces, that's what you're gonna see triangles arranged in a hex face. But once you begin turning it, you're gonna rapidly see there's something else going on. There are extra parts here. And you see how these jump out at you, these sets of three? Well, it occurred to us that that looks much like butterflies blooming onto flowers or bats coming out at night. And we thought we might be able to take advantage of this in the assembly method so that the build is as interesting as the finished product. So let's have another look at this. What are warped hexagons? Well, it's just what it sounds like. A warped hexagon is a six-sided form that simply doesn't fit in our space. This was a form that was started with six beads in the center. As you see right down in there, it's a six bead start. And so it has six increases and then six little sections of flat peyote. We have it folded into taco form for this illustration, which is basically just folded in half. To me, it looks just like a little taco, loaded up, right? But I would like to point out that this little taco form is actually even more interesting than it looks. To make the butterfly form here, this is half of it, what we're doing is we're pinching together and eventually sewing together the gold sections to make the butterfly body. Then this beautiful hypar or warp square that leaps out gets a triangle here and a triangle here and that forms a kind of a tetrahedra. One of the tetrahedra faces is like one side of the warped hex and the other tetrahedra face is the other side. So you can certainly make tetrahedra that have different faces and we'll get into that later. But in this case, we're looking at these in taco form and we're creating the butterfly net by arranging them like this. So this and this are really the same thing. They are beautiful butterflies, 
that will neatly sew up into mirror bathedra, right? They're not exactly tetrahedra. They're more like three-dimensional bats or butterflies. There's your little bat ears up on top. See? Pretty neat, right? So you can imagine the Halloween fun if these were made out of black and they just happened to pop up from your bat cycle. Boom! There come three bats. Or if you wanted to make flower forms and then have the butterflies appear, that would be neat too. So we wanted to just get those of you advanced beaters among you interested in these assembly methods. Oh, ooh, look at that. Because the methods ideally can be, as we said, as lovely as the finished form. So those of you who understand what's going on, rock forward. We cannot teach the warped hexagon. Unfortunately, it can't be taught. It can only be learned. But the basic information is simple. You can make forms for these experiments here that have three, four, five, or six sides. It doesn't matter. They're all useful, but I want to point out something interesting about the warped hexagon, right? Each of these has a different way to fold, and each of them can and cannot hide in different forms. But the warped hexagon is very interesting because those of you who did the podcast, are you seeing something familiar here? That's right. The warped hexagon is a six wing, right? It's just a little podcast with six live points. You can, if you're careful, play with this and form it into a flat form, what we call taco form. So the hexagon has a really special application for us. And if you're clever about this, you can fold it without harming it. If you'd like to build one to play with, I highly recommend it. And even more fun is to use our deconstruction techniques to remove the center and change the geometry. Here's a warped hexagon that I built a little bit larger, removed the center on, and then did the infill just a little bit off. So I've created a form that doesn't know what it is. My question for you is that what are you gonna make with all of this information?